Hello. In this video, we are going to talk about waves, particularly the waves that form electromagnetic radiation. Now, a relationship that is true for any type of wave is the following. If we multiply nu times lambda, we get the speed of the wave. Now this letter here, which kind of looks like a V, is actually the Greek letter nu. And nu is the frequency of the wave. That's our frequency. This letter here that looks like an upside down Y is the Greek letter lambda. And this is the wavelength of the radiation. Now, in the specific case, when we're talking about electromagnetic radiation, all electromagnetic radiation propagates at exactly the same speed, which we call the speed of light. So we can write this relationship as follows. We have nu times lambda equals c, where c is the speed of light. And we know, thanks to the special theory of relativity from Albert Einstein, that this particular value is a constant. So it tells us that when we're dealing with electromagnetic radiation, if we multiply the frequency of the radiation times its wavelength, we're going to get the speed of light. And the speed of light has the value of 2.9979 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Now, suppose that we have electromagnetic radiation with a wavelength of 500 nanometers. This particular type of radiation will be in the visible range. Generally, the visible range will be somewhere between 400 and 750 nanometers. And one thing which is useful to keep in mind is that one nanometer equals 10 to the minus nine meters. So now there's two things which we would like to figure out. The first is we would like to figure out what is the frequency of this particular radiation. And second, we want to figure out if we have a single photon, a single particle of this type of light, how much energy is contained in the photon. So the first thing we need to do is to write out more explicitly, if we have radiation of 500 nanometers, using the definition of a nanometer, this is 500 times 10 to the minus nine meters for the wavelength. And we can also write this as 5.000 times 10 to the minus seven meters. Next, we can use our relationship that if we multiply the wavelength times the frequency, we get the speed of light. So we can actually manipulate this equation to see that the frequency of the light is going to be the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So let's see what we get when we do that. So our frequency is going to be the speed of light, which we know is a constant of 2.99 seven, nine times 10 to the eighth meters per second divided by the wavelength, which we've already seen as 5.000 times 10 to the minus seventh meters. Making use of the units, we notice right away that the units of meters will cancel with meters and we're gonna get an answer that's going to be in terms of inverse seconds, seconds to the minus one, which is the units of frequency. We also notice that we have these powers of 10. When we have powers of 10 and we divide them, we subtract the exponents. 
So the exponent, just for the power of 10 part here, we're going to have 8 minus a minus 7. A minus a minus like a plus. So this means 8 plus 7, or 10 to the 15th power inverse seconds. The rest of it we have over here is going to be the just the parts involving units is going to be 0 0.5996. So we see that the frequency is going to be 0 0.5596 times 10 to the 15th power. And if we convert that to um, ordinary scientific notation, we get that's going to be 5.996 times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds. So when we have visible light, the frequency of visible light will be in the range of 10 to the 14th inverse seconds. Another unit, which is a derived unit, which means the same thing as an inverse second, is unit of a hertz, which is abbreviated as HZ. For the next part of the problem, we want to figure out the energy of a single photon of this type of light. Typically, when we are interested just in the energy and not ultimately in the frequency, we often can leave the intermediate value in this form. So it's often useful not to convert it to the standard scientific notation if we're going to continue with further calculations. So to figure out the energy of a photon, we use Planck's law, and we find that the energy of a single photon is equal to H, Planck's constant, times the frequency. And Planck's constant has the value of 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. So that is the value of H, Planck's constant, and then we've seen that the frequency has a value of 0 0.5996 times 10 to the 15th inverse seconds. When we multiply these two terms, we notice that seconds and inverse seconds cancel out. And we get an answer in terms of joules, which is a proper unit for energy. If we just handle the powers of 10 part, when we multiply powers of 10, we add the exponents. So we have 10 to the minus 34 plus 15 gives us 10 to the minus 19 for the powers of 10 part. We've noticed that the units are joules, which are the proper units. So all that's left is to multiply the unitless parts, the 6.626, times 0 0.5996. And when we do that part, we see that we get a value of 3.973. So we have determined that if we have electromagnetic radiation with a wavelength of 500 nanometers, we saw that the frequency was 5.996 times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds. And the energy of a single photon of that radiation is 3.973 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. You will notice that when we are dealing with electromagnetic radiation that is in the visible light range, the energy of the photons will always be in this range. So when you practice doing problems, notice the magnitude of your answers. So you'll notice that if you do a calculation on visible light and you get a value that's wildly different from 10 to the minus 19, 10 to the minus 19 joules, that tells you that you've made a mistake somewhere. I thank you for your attention. Have a go.